Well, welcome everyone to our 2022 SAVE Awards. Um, we, this is really our most exciting night of the year. Um, we always enjoy the lecture series um, where we get together and discuss the issues, but tonight's really special and we always have a great, great time. We wish that this could be done in person. Unfortunately, we can't. Um, so uh, we'll do the next best thing. We'll celebrate you uh, tonight as best as we can. Um, I'm Sister Sharon Havlack, a board member of the uh, SAVE Award, a uh, SAVE um, Alliance. Let's try this again. Science Alliance for Valuing the Environment. And um, I will be kind of uh, moving things along through the evening uh, tonight. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Marianne Gualik, uh, president of Lurd University, was supposed to give our welcome, um, and she is not able to be with us. So Sister Rosine will give our official welcome to us. Sister Rosine. Welcome, everyone. I'm glad I see most of the people here that I know. Some I don't know, so we'll meet them. Uh, this is our 30th annual Save Awards ceremony, usually held in person at the Franciscan Center. But um, like Sharon said, uh, we do what we can do as we can do it. And so I'm just glad that we could meet everybody here. Uh, I'd like to begin with an opening prayer first. Loving God, creator of the universe, with all living creatures and non-living entities as part of it, we come in gratitude this evening to celebrate the human giftedness given to many people in our local area who continue to minister with passion and love for care for our earth. At some point in our lives, we each received a call and continued to follow up on it, not knowing where it would lead. It just felt right. And we continued moving forward. Today's celebration is one milestone on this journey. Pope Francis in a recent encyclical called us to strive for integral ecology. That is care for earth in all its aspects of life, including ecological and social issues. The people and groups we celebrate today are living proof of what can be accomplished to keep our earth and its inhabitants healthy and whole. Our earth is healthy when we humans are healthy and these times must continue. Let us listen to one another this evening and celebrate the gifts we have been given to give us continued strength to pursue this most important mission of sustaining a healthy planet. In the words of Thomas Berry, a cultural historian and ecologian, at this time in the history of the universe, we humans have the task of saving our earth, of saving a planet. At this point in time, this is our great work. God help us to continue our part for life on our common home. Amen. Okay. Uh Thank you, Sister Rosine. And now uh, Sister Rosine will give us a little bit of a background on the SAVE organization. Yeah. Uh, my name is Sister Rosine Sobzak. I'm a Franciscan here in, this, in the uh, Franciscan community on Convent Boulevard. I uh, founded this organization with two other women in 1990, actually a couple years before, but we've been official since 1990. We're a 501c3 nonprofit. And uh, it began with Linda Penn, who is now deceased, Charlene Zerniak, who's at the University of Toledo, and myself. We see this organization as a catalyst for change in the areas of ecology, spirituality, and sustainability, linking people and groups together to care for Earth, our common home. We have thus far identified activities that you see on the screen here. We have bi-monthly public lectures. They'll start in September and you'll see the first one on the, on the program tonight. So you know when that is. We provide scholarships to high school seniors who are planning on entering into a higher uh, education. We provide environmental awards at Northwest District Science Day 
You're going to hear from a few of these people tonight. We present environmental awards at the annual awards night that you've been hearing about and reading about in your emails, etc. And we do collaborate with other organizations. And we have about, I want to say, 15 partners in um, that we, you know, know that what their life is like in their group and our group, etc. So uh, we do partner, but we have even uh, further involvement with other people. So John, could you give me the next slide, please? Um, these are our corporate sponsors. Many of them have been with us for eons, it seems like. So I just like to tell you, um, just read off who they are. And um, if you ever go someplace where you're involved there, say, you know, I saw your name in the, in the save newsletter or whatever you wanna say. But we have the Baha'i of Sylvania, Budget Blinds, Fisk Brothers Lubriplate, Frogtown Computers, and they'll be joining us in August. It's not official yet, but he is joining us in August. Holy Spirit Catholic Community, Lourdes University, the Sisters of St. Francis, Sophia Center, the Butterfly House, Water Keepers, that's our most recent definite addition, Wild Birds Unlimited and Wright Financial Group LLC in Sylvania. We also have an in-kind sponsor of the Christ Child Society of Toledo that we work together with on various projects. So that gives you a little bit of a hint as to what actually goes on in our organization. And if you've seen our brochure, et cetera, you, you know probably a little bit more than than I've just given here. Uh, our organization uh, has, has sponsored three, usually three sponsored judges to judge at Northwest District Science Day. And uh, we've been going to the University of Toledo to judge those projects for 20 years, maybe even longer. And uh, last year, because of the COVID, people, uh, didn't want to come together in a big group. So they had last year's thing at uh, 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 Ohio State and it was Zoom. So we did that. This past year, we thought we'd be in person, but again, we were on Zoom. And so um, three of us met, and, no, four of us met uh, as um, SAVE members, not necessarily board members. We had myself as a board and three other non-members uh, of our organization, I mean, members, yes, but not on the board, to judge the science fair. And I know tonight we have at least one, two, I don't know how many we have here. So um, I would like to ask, first of all, uh, Fiona Nula Freemus, are you here tonight? Yes. Uh, could you tell us something about yourself, where you are, and uh, you know your grade, what you did, and um, anything you want to tell us about your project? So I'm in grade nine. I go to Patrick Henry High School. Um, so I, my project was over how plants survive different liquids. And my goal was to test if there are different liquids that we can use um, to help um, farmers make the plants grow better and healthier so they can sell more and then they can make more back for profit. And so I ended up using four different liquids, Sprite, water, apple juice, and propel water. And I am testing them with the implants. And in the end, I learned that farmers should stick with water. <laughs> what did you find out? <laughs> I found out though so that, um, so first when I was doing my testing, my apple juice ended up dying first. Um, I don't know why though, it's probably because of the, there's too much glucose in the apple juice. And then um, my Propel died next. And then after that, my Sprite was doing way better than my water. And I thought that Sprite may have been the key, but then three days before I ended up my project, the Sprite just slowly started to die. And so in conclusion, um, in conclusive, I decided that water is always the best way to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And Fiona has already got her certificate because that was done in March. And also uh, she got a check for $100. And that's what we give to our students who, um, who um, um, uh, excel in the areas that we're looking for in ecology, sustainability, and spirituality. We have, is, is uh, Avnish is here. I saw his name. He doesn't have a picture. Avnish, are you here? Uh, yes, hello. Okay. Could you tell us something about your project? So my project was a new prototype of irrigation system uh, created for most, uh, mostly cost, of, cost efficiency and con uh, water mm -hmm. conservation. And what did you find out? Uh, so the main things that I was testing for is how long it takes for the system to saturate the soil, uh, how quickly it saturates the soil, and the overall, the way that the system works so that if I were to do a continuation of the project with actual plants, uh, to see how well that would work also. Mm -hmm. uh, and I found that after 24 hours, the soil reaches its full saturation, which did not go above 136 milliliters of water. Mm -hmm. And you too got an award. Are you going on with this project at all? Uh, I will most likely continue it next year. Okay. Um, and instead of using just soil and testing uh, moisture, uh, the moisture in the soil, I will actually be using real plants and seeing how well they survive in the um, system's environment. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Both of you did a good job. Is Caitlin here? No? Okay, she's another one. She was from St. Rose School. Her picture is there. Uh, she did electrical resistance in soil and she's in grade eight at St. Rose and I don't know where she's planning on going <clears throat> Uh, next year. So um, our uh, congratulations to all of you uh, students who got the award. And if anybody's not uh, muted, how about a little clap for them? Thank you. Hmm? Okay. A special, again, thank you and congratulations to the three of you. Um, you give us much hope for the future. And so we're just really blessed to have you here with us tonight. Uh, blessings on the future um, also. Um, Sister Rosine, I'd like to ask you now to introduce our award winner for the um, uh, Eco Service Award, the David and Janice Sandys Eco Service Award. Mm -hmm. Yes, our uh, David and Janice Sandys Eco Service Award this year is given to Carla Leo a graphic designer, and she's the Assistant Director of Marketing and Communications at Lourdes University. And I would like Carla to tell us what she does, how she does it, whatever. And I learned a whole lot by reading her thing here. I didn't know uh, about the children she had and everything. So Carla, tell us what you do for SAVE and then what you do, period, like, you know, who you are. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, um, as Sister Rosine says, I'm a graphic designer uh, at Lord University. I've been there for 16 years. I've worked with Sister Rosine for many of those years. Um, for SAVE, I, uh, I do the, um, the lecture flyers that she sends out to let everybody know what the lecture is about for, you know, every other month. And um, I also several years ago redesigned the SAVE logo. Um, I've worked on SAVE annual report and um, probably some other things that I can't think of right now. For Lords, um, some of the things on the screen, I designed logos like the um, Lords athletic logo, the iWolf power of innovative innovative learning logo. I came up with the wolf eyes for the athletic um, rec center. And I also do the um, at Lords alumni magazine that comes out three or four times a year. So I'm 
I'm very busy with several different projects all the time at Lourdes, and I really have enjoyed working with Sister Rosine on the SAVE projects that I've done. So I'm, I'm very thankful to get this award. And I also have, um, I'm married and I have two daughters that I'm very proud of. <laughs> One of them is, um, went to the University of Finley and graduated in 2016. And my youngest is at Miami University and she just got done with her freshman year. So she's home mm -hmm. for the summer. Well, thank you so much, Carla. Congratulations. And yeah. uh, most especially, thank you for making us look good. <laughs> <laughs> you do a great job at that. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, David, I'd like you um, now to uh, introduce our eco friend of the environment. Hello, everyone. My name is David Sobzak. I'm the treasurer for SAVE, and I am proud to I'm introduce proud to Sister Rosine. <laughs> Are we okay? Yes. Uh, I am proud to introduce our Equal Friend of the Environment Award. It's going to the Future Lawn and Clean Wood Recycling uh, Organization, and perhaps uh, you've driven down Bancroft as you cross over the 475 overpass and you see a large organization on the left-hand side with large piles of uh, shredded debris, uh, that's their organization. And they are uh, both uh, Greg and Mike Cott. I see Mike is on, I don't know if Greg is or not, but uh, they're both graduates of Sylvania Southview, the horticulture program. They also attended the Ohio State University Agriculture Technical Institute in Mooster. They uh, created a yard waste recycling process with the uh, solid Lucas County Solid Waste Management in 1993. And in 1996, they founded the Cleanwood Recycling Organization with a simple mission. And I think this is a very good mission to reduce green waste in the landfills and make a usable recyclable product. So in the last 25 years, they've recycled an average of 60,000 yards of material every single year. Think of how much that has improved our landfills, 60,000 yards of material every year. For the past 15 years, they've been a community partner working with groups like Toledo Grows, providing free compost to create community gardens, many in low income areas. This is the most important thing. Their belief is to take what Mother Nature provides, process, recycle, and return it to her. I can't think of a more strong mission than that. I'd like to introduce Mike Cott. If uh, Greg is here, that'd be great also. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, anything I didn't cover. And I know you had mentioned to me that uh, you're not familiar with getting awards. So this was a, a kind of a surprise for you. Oh, thank, thank you, David, for uh, all those nice words. And that's correct. We've been doing this for over 27 years. And this is the first time we've been given an award for taking care of Mother Earth. So we're actually pretty humbled uh, that your organization has uh, decided to provide us with this, uh, this, this honor. Uh, my brother Greg's sitting behind me here and... Uh, we kind of pride ourselves on what we do and uh, we're going to keep doing this until we can't do it anymore. Can you give us a little hint so people know what you, how you do it or what sure. you do? We, we take all green waste that's generated. So anybody that's cutting your grass or trimming a bush or leaves that come off the street, I have contracts with Luke, uh, with Savannah Township and Ottawa Hills and city of Toledo. In fact, I actually manage the two city of Toledo uh, composting sites where they compost all the leaves that are generated in the city of Toledo. My company manages both those sites for the city of Toledo. We bring that material in and we do the same thing mother nature does in nature, except we do it underneath a controlled environment. We make all those windrows and then when we flip them and add oxygen and moisture to it, it increases the aerobic uh, decomposition of the product and it makes the product quicker than mother nature does in the woods. 
if we would put, we'll put it that way. We take all the brush that's generated and we make three different types of mulches. We take, I probably have a hundred uh, businesses that bring me their used or their used pallets. So I take all the pallets and I grind them and I denail them and then we add a mulch colorant to those uh, uh, ground and denailed wood and make a mulch product out of it and reuse it. Everything we do here is 100% recycled. There's nothing that comes in our front gates that we do not recycle. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much and continued blessings on your business and especially continued blessings on all the good that you do for Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, she appreciates it, as do we. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, I now like to ask... Um, uh, Nancy Simon, another uh, SAVE board member, to announce our Eco School Award, the Elementary Award. Mm -hmm. Nancy? Welcome, everyone. Um, I do have the honor of announcing our Eco School Award, the Elementary Level, and it goes to Wayne Trail Elementary in Maumee. The Wayne Trail Environmental Club, or the Green Team, as it is known around school, was founded in 2006 by teacher Christine Smith, and she presently advises the club. And the club is made up of five green teams. It is an extracurricular activity open to fourth and fifth graders. They have assigned weeks and tasks, and the teams include container recycling, litter prevention, paper recycling, gardening, and maintaining the bird sanctuary. They even have a greenhouse and rain gardens. Um, Christine started the club to show students they can make a difference and why taking care of our environment is so important. Congratulations to Wayne Trail School and that's Dr. Niederhaus is the principal and the green team. Uh, with Christine being the founder and advisor. Would you like to tell us a little bit about you know, the programs? Sure. Um, hello, everybody. I'm glad to be here. I absolutely am thankful um, that the Science Alliance for Valuing the Environment seeks out different people to um, honor and promote uh, taking care of our mother earth. Um, we have, I, I was eco educator of the year, I think in 2006. Um, so I was delighted to have our school also get the recognition for their hard work. Um, they, the kids are so into what they're doing this, this past year, just installing with the Toledo Zoo, their urban prairie, um, Mike, I think had a little bit to do with that. I'm not sure, Mike, you can speak on that one. But um, anyways, and just the fact that they really are citizens that want to take care of the earth and wise use of resources. And they're happy about being out in the greenhouse. And just, we were listening to the rain as we're planting our plants for our plant sale. And they're like, this is just the best way to start the day. And just to be able to introduce the kids to this type of thing. And some of them never have had the chance to dig in the dirt or never have had the chance to learn about gardening or wise use of resources. So I'm just very uh, thankful for the opportunity and um, appreciative of the fact that you have chosen us for the award. So Christine, you grow all your plants in your greenhouse. The students do, right? Um, the students grow a lot of the plants in the greenhouse. I also bring a lot of the perennials from my house. And then I teach them about splitting the plants. And um, and then we sell all of that to sustain our club. We're recent, and we have a goal right now, we're re recently working towards uh, go zero in the cafeteria for zero waste. So we're looking to get compostable utensils, compostable trays, everything basically compostable and have a service take care of doing that for us so that we um, basically reduce it to zero waste within our cafeteria. So any of the money that we raised this year, we raised um, with seeds from my garden last year um, and with different plants that we planted and plants from my house, we raised like $700 yeah. 
um, for the Go Zero program. So we, we still have a little bit to go uh, for that uh, goal in order to be able to start that service with the Go Zero in the cafeteria. Fabulous. Good. How do you but, connect with, uh, with uh, um, Future Lawn? I'm interested in that. No, nope. I did not know about Future Lawn. Oh, okay. I thought there was a connection there. Okay, sorry. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Christine, for, uh, for all that you do, and um, especially for planting the seed in the, the hearts of your students. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we hope that we will have budding um, future ecologists. Uh, so thank you for all that you do. Um, hey, Christy, I don't mean to interrupt, but Christy, we should get together because I have a lot of plants that I could be helping you out with. Uh, okay. Great. Great. <laughs> Please uh, <Good>. message me. <laughs> yeah. I don't Good. know if that's available. But. Yeah, that's great. Um, and th this is the kind of thing that we really miss not being able to do it in person. Right. <laughs> so I that we can do a little bit um, uh, with through the Zoom. <laughs> Again, thank you. Um, and uh, right now, I'd like to um, introduce David once again, who is going to uh, tell us about the Equal School Award, a secondary school. And David, you are muted. Is he there? Uh, David, you are muted. There you go. I'm following the rules and I can't remember to unmute. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's interesting is we have both Mike and Matt Dick on the uh, program tonight listening and uh, both brothers are administrators of schools and both are very involved in ecological, ecological activities in the Maumee area. So uh, commendable to both of them. Uh, Maumee High School has been involved in a program with the English honors students and the AP chemistry classes, taking on a project uh, in conjunction with the Green River Ribbon Initiative. Uh, this is aimed at helping to educate the students and the citizens of Maumee about the importance of the oak openings region and the native plant species that are there. Uh, the students attended a day-long workshop on Oak Openings Region, hosted by the Toledo Metro Parks and the Green Ribbon Initiative. They spent another day at the Oak Openings Metro Park itself, taking a Walden walk with naturalist Kim High. The students focused their efforts on two endeavors, native plant demonstration gardens and folk tales about native plants. The gardens will, or their planting are at the entrance to the high school football stadium. And they're doing further research on openings on oak openings. The students are researching the native plants, and which ones would do well in specific locations that they're planting, based on the season and the location. They're designing the layout of each garden and designing signs with QR codes to share specific information about each species that they've planted. The stories will also be accessible via QR codes on signs posted on the garden. The garden club expressed, in, uh, the Maumee Garden Club expressed an interest in helping us, uh, the school, form a high school group to maintain the gardens for years to come. I'd like to introduce Matt Dick, who is the principal of Maumee High School, who can give us a little bit more information about their yes. program. I'll tell you what, I'm just a cheerleader right here and a big supporter of what's going on. I'm going to pass that torch right over to the woman who's been the driving force behind it, and that's Allison Mackin. An attachment to me. Thank you, Mr. Dick. Um, I am very lucky in that I end up teaching students who have had Christine Smith and Mike Dick as their teachers before me in the mommy system. And they come to me very open to doing all sorts of, of projects that have to do with our, um, our region of Ohio and the importance of nature. And we read so many things um, that the, the sense of place is so important in so many of the novels that we read. 
Um, we read Walden, we read um, My Antonia, we read Huckleberry Finn. And one of my goals has been to connect the students to a sense of place here in Northwest Ohio and learning about how unique um, the Oak Openings region is and how um, it needs to be preserved preserved and with the Green Ribbon Initiative even expanded, um, has fit nicely into a lot of the things that we read and talk about during the year. So it was awfully fun to undertake this project. We ordered plants today, we cleaned out beds last week and we get to get our hands dirty and actually start planting next week. Wow. <laughs> that sounds exciting. <laughs> you people are doing something that uh, higher ed would love to do, and that is to take a two departments or three departments to work together on something common in, uh, in the way that you've done it. What you are doing is marvelous stuff. Um, I wish that, you know, a lot of other places could combine uh, uh, art and nature and music and nature and English and nature and to uh, uh, do a lot of inter- interdisciplinary learning. So I congratulate you on that. Again, thank you so much for all that you do. I'll tell you, um, as I read over your little um, uh, write up, it was quite amazing to me. And I, I wish that I could take part in it. It was so exciting. So mm -hmm. th thank you for all that you do. Thank you for all that you do. Okay, mm -hmm. oh, great. Um, now it is my pleasure to um, introduce our Eco Community Award winner, uh, who is someone who is well known to us, uh, to many of us. And um, uh, as I was thinking about, well, what can I say about Mike Ferner? Um, the word kept popping in my head from uh, a term that I learned from the Pope's encyclical Laudato Si, that of integral ecology. And it seems to me that that's what Mike is about. The many hats that he wears, the many things that he does um, uh, throughout his whole career um, have been a, a wonderful way of pulling things together, of showing how everything is interconnected. Um, his work for uh, Lake Erie, as well as his, his work um, with corporations, um, his work um, looking at um, the, the uh, factory farms, um, his passion for Lake Erie, as well as what he does in his own yard. Um, Mike, uh, congratulations. We'd like to hear a little bit from you about all the good that you have done. And Mike, you are muted. Yeah, okay, thank you. Is, uh, am I coming through now? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Sister Sharon. Um, I appreciate that. And uh, I also wanted to uh, tell Sister Rosine that I really appreciated her uh, opening remarks, uh, the, the prayer that she did. It was very meaningful. And uh, thank you um, all very much for uh, maintaining uh, the SAVE organization. That's no small thing. And uh, particularly uh, today for... Uh, putting me up for an award. I really do appreciate that. Uh, a lot of times uh, the recognition of our peers is uh, about the only uh, real tangible reward that we get uh, for doing this kind of work. So I, I really sincerely appreciate this. Um, to uh, touch on uh, something that uh, you asked about, Sharon, um, mm -hmm. Uh, my wife, Sue Carter, and I have turned our uh, tiny little yard, or about 90% of it, into a native plant nursery. And um, we do our best to keep as many species going as possible. Uh, last year, I counted, I think, 72 native species um, in just a small area. And one of the things that I've learned uh, from uh, reading and uh, watching documentaries uh, about people who have been involved in uh, native plants in um, urban settings is how little it, it uh, takes as far as the amount of room to really have a, a real uh, bit of nature that you can walk out your door. 
an experience and it's great to go to the national parks, but um, when you can walk out into the yard and experience what happens when you get away from grass and uh, have some native plants, uh, that's really, really rewarding. And one, one other thing that um, I'd like to mention, um, and it's, it's very inspiring to hear uh, the activities of the students and the educators. Uh, that's, that is great as uh, it's uh, a cliche, but very true that that's where the, the future is heading. And it's nice to see people engaged in this kind of work. And one of the things that, that I've learned is uh, not only the particular um, issues involved with uh, the environment, for example, uh, but also underlying that, uh, just as importantly and perhaps more important, is the whole question of democracy and who is really running the show here in our culture. And as uh, Sharon mentioned, uh, corporations at this point are really calling the shots. And if we really had a democracy, uh, we would uh, be able to craft the kind of life that we really deserve and that the planet deserves. And uh, just to give you one example, um, <laughs> our group, the uh, Lake Erie Advocates, has uh, taken on the issue of these uh, uh, factory farms, and I say farms in quotes because they're not farms, they're factories. Um, but we've taken this issue on uh, initially because of uh, what the uh, billions of gallons of manure do to the lake when it reaches here from the farmland uh, initially. And then also more recently because of the uh, conditions for the animals inhumane conditions. And um, it's interesting and in where the democracy comes in is when you think about it, uh, who voted <laughs> to have our uh, meat and milk and eggs raised in this kind of a way? Um, nobody. And the, the reason that this industry has come about has been that the people who figured they could make the most money out of it uh, got hold of the politicians and they uh, wrote laws to uh, direct the farm policy and the subsidies in the direction of this type of production. And so this is an, just one example of how uh, a lack of democracy um, winds up leaving the, the sorts of systems that we have today. So, and again, um, I, I really appreciate the honor and the award and uh, congratulate um, all of you that have done such a great job in, in keeping SAVE going and uh, contributing to the community over the years. Thank you very much. Good. Well, thank you, Mike, for all that you do and the, the many ways that you can um, show the interconnections between what's happening and uh, how it's affecting uh, the average person and especially the, the, the poor in our area. Um, and uh, we hope that we, you have many, many more years of success and many, many more years to challenge us um, to keep on the straight and narrow path, if you will. Thank you. I'd now like to call on uh, Nancy Simon to announce our Eco Educator Award for an elementary school ele um, educator. Okay, yes. Um, we are proud to announce that Christy DeSell is our Eco Educator for elementary schools. Christy is a fourth grade teacher at Door Street School with 27 years of experience. Because of her passion for our earth, Christy has received numerous awards. In 2017, she was named the Lucas County Soil and Water Conservation Educator of the Year. In 2020, she was named Educator of the Year for Springfield Local Schools. Christy collaborates with the Toledo Zoo to help restore native prairies in Northwest Ohio and has even co-authored a native prairie curriculum with the zoo. She works locally and globally to provide opportunities for her students in the classroom 
and outdoors in the native prairie classroom. They learn the value of our natural resources, conservation strategies, and gain a greater appreciation for our earth. Christy, congratulations. And I'm wondering how you get your kids inside the building after they've been outside in the prairies. You know, that's, um, it's really, they love all going outside in their outdoor classroom and they, you know, they ask, oh, if we are really good, can we do science for a reward? Can we go outside? They just love um, <laughs> science. And I get a lot of students for that reason, for just the, they're passionate about uh, the sciences and conservation and things like that. So I just want to thank everyone for this honor. It's pretty humble to get an award for something that you do that you just love doing and you're passionate about. Um, I just think when you were talking about being a catalyst of change, I take that very personally and I, and passionately, I just thrive on finding new opportunities to get my students outside learning, um, being citizen scientists and naturalists. And we are constantly just, just helping them because our, this generation, everything moves so fast and with the phone and technology to stop and pay attention and observe like a true naturalist and just, oh, there's nothing there. We'll look closer, you know, and there's always living things everywhere, even just in the, like a, a scoop full of soil, um, mm -hmm. those microorganisms. So just getting them to notice things and have an appreciation. Uh, one of the, well, with the Toledo Zoo with Project Prairie, that's the um, one thing we're very involved with, um, with curriculum and getting outside in the prairie and having them have an understanding that 100 years ago, 99% of those native prairies are gone um, in this whole like Northwest Ohio area. So, wow, like, well, now they feel like my prairie is really important in my, bat in my school yard. And then, but then also taking it a step further. So why is our prairie so important? What, in what ways does it benefit our environment? So we delve into, you know, research and we, work in collaboration, we do GLOBE protocol and GLOBE observations, which is global learning and observations to benefit our environment is what GLOBE stands for. And we did authentic research in our prairie and I had six science teams studying in our prairie and um, research questions like, how does the soil temperature in the prairie compare to the turf grass? Or how does the animal, animal diversity in our prairie compared to the playground. or And so they make these research questions and then they went and took their uh, science tools out and they collected their, made observations, collected their data, and they actually wrote abstracts with, for science research and presented their findings in graph form and narrative forms with conclusions. And they realized all 16s when they were studying soil temperature, soil moisture, they studied animal diversity, plant diversity, and air temperature. And with all of those comparisons of the prairie to either a turf grass or the playground or even the blacktop, they realized that our native prairie is a very wonderful place for um, and habitat for all of our plants and animals and insects and pollinators because the, and for a fourth grader to understand, well, what does soil temperature mean? And what, is, what, what does that mean? And well, the, the temperature in our prairie is warmer in the winter and it's cooler in the summer. And so that benefits our species. And, you know, it's kind of go into also why it's important to have native prairies because they attract our native pollinators. If you don't have those vegetation, you're not going to have those native pollinators back and they could actually just become extinct or, you know, and then we'll have to do uh, find alternative ways to pollinate things and think of all of the uh, resources we have from uh, pollinators. So food and other, uh, other things. So it's just wonderful that they have this research and I'm giving them opportunities to share this globally and locally and globally. We're actually going this Monday to uh, the Toledo Zoo and we're presenting all of our research at the Globe Symposium at the Toledo Zoo. So that will be very exciting. 
on a local level. And then this summer, they're going to present with the virtual uh, Globe Symposium. And that is, I think there's 100, over 120 countries are in Globe and scientists actually rate and, and judge their research. And one of my teams actually won superior rating and our school gets a large stipend to use for STEM education. So Wonderful. can't wait to find something fun to do and exciting to help uh, increase the conservation efforts with that. So, but thank you everyone for uh, your time and for your acknowledgement and just, you know, recognizing uh, just doing what I enjoy doing with my students in Outdoor Prairie. And I could go on more and more, but I won't. <laughs> So, and then thank, thank you so much, Christy, uh, for yeah. all that you do. This is really wonderful, and how how exciting it is to really introduce your students to such um, sophisticated concepts, mm -hmm. but in a way that they can understand and take hold of, and and then to be awarded for it. Mm -hmm. Congratulations! Thank you. Um, I, I, I have know. a quick question for Christy. This is Christine Smith again. Oh, I um, we have our prairie new this year. D is can you can I get contact information for you too <laughs> after this? Oh yes, of course. We all, maybe we'll put it in the chat. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I have. We did. Uh, I'm sure we probably did some of your lessons this year since it was brand new, and the kids were super excited about it. So, congratulations on that. And yes, thank you. Yes, and I know um, Mike. Dick is on here too, and he helped write some of the curriculum as well. I did third and fourth, and he did what grades do you do seven and eight? So, yeah, I was seven and eight, and Amy Boris did um five and six. Yes, so yeah, well, so we will put our contact information, and and so yeah, you're, you're year one, but they does it look like there's much, but they're year one. Everything's happening underground. They're establishing their roots. So again, they'll say, oh, there's nothing out there. Well, there is. They can still go out and make observations <laughs> in the soil. Okay. Good. Well, thank you so much. And uh, this is really exciting that you'll be able to make connections like this. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, I'd like to ask Sister Rosine to, to announce our Eco Educator Award uh, in the Higher Ed Division. Mm -hmm. to Rosine? Yes. Uh, we'd like to present the Eco Educator Award Higher Ed to Dr. Thomas Wasmer from Siena Heights University. And Tom and I became, um, I don't know, collaborative partners via, via the emails that we send out because he has a series at uh, Siena Heights and we have a series at, at Lourdes. And so we kind of keep each other informed about what's going on. He was born and educated in Germany. And he has worked in the United States since 2006. And uh, while keeping his German citizenship, uh, he, he continues and now became a United States citizen. He earned his biology diploma from the U University of Freiburg in 1991 and did research with dung beetles. And, my, and his PhD by studying um, uh, the European hamster so he's uh, very much into the environment when he does something like that. He, um, he first worked as the uh, Waldorf Steiner School High School Science teacher before joining Siena Heights in 2010. At Siena Heights, he founded the Sustainability, Sustainable College Committee and organized the William Isa, maybe Endowment Environmental Speaker Series. And, um, it continues to, to let us know what things uh, are on that series. Uh, he works for our a common home and has done many, many things, field labs, etc. But I'd like him to explain what he does. And um, Tom, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Sister Rosine. <laughs> and also thank you to SAFE for honoring my work with uh, this award. Um, yeah, I see my, my work kind of double, and I think in higher education it is natural that, uh, of course, we are teaching students, but of course, also as a university, we are um, um, doing research and supporting public uh, opinion, 
and trying to influence uh, our local communities. Um, till now, I think I'm the first awardee uh, uh, who is not in Ohio, but of course we are very close. We are in a, a eco region together. Uh, so, um, but we have uh, common problems, uh, factory uh, farms also with a small, uh, the, emphasis on factory, right? Uh, same thing in Michigan. Uh, <clears throat> actually, uh, a lot of the, uh, of the load of the Maumee River comes from Michigan, uh, from factory farms in Michigan. So we have these common problems uh, everywhere. And uh, so in teaching my students first, of course, uh, I try that, uh, that they understand the basics of ecology and the basics of evolution, which are the, at the basis of how things work in nature. And then uh, inevitably where we humans uh, mess things up. And uh, it, 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 I find connections in all the subjects that I teach uh, naturally in, my field ecology classes, I do a terrestrial and uh, freshwater ecology uh, classes that are all the labs as long as we can, seasonal uh, outdoors uh, and studying methods, how we can actually um, gather data uh, in, the na in nature. And, and, and we, we see everywhere uh, issues arising. One of the places we go is Heritage Park, uh, a gem uh, in the city of uh, Adrian, uh, Adrian's area, very close. Of course, with our schedules, we can't really do extended field trips so easy. Uh, and there is, is an oil pu uh, pump very visible, right? And, and there was this boom of oil extraction a couple of years ago. And, and now, now in one sense, uh, America shouldn't be really hurt by what's happening in Ukraine and uh, the embargo against Russian oil, but uh, we are hurting, right? Because the world is interconnected because most of the oil uh, in America is domestic uh, or, uh, or Middle Eastern. So uh, we don't get any of Putin's oil, but of course it, the economy is, is hurting as well. Can't see any of you because of the sun. Uh, you, you can't see my picture. Is that what you're saying? Uh, my, my video? Uh, I'll continue, uh, Tom, if you could. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, it's not really full sun that comes from the side, but I can maybe close the curtain, is that better? That's good. <laughs> that's good, great. thank you. Uh, yeah, and so, so that's the student side and the, the teaching side, but um, uh, for quite a, a few years now, I, I, uh, I started to also try to move uh, Siena Heights University to more sustainability and to uh, and founded the um, Sustainable College Committee and uh, took over an abandoned speaker series on the environment because uh, many of my colleagues thought that uh, previous uh, people who tried to uh, uh, do something with the endowment uh, money we have, that uh, uh, nobody would really have an interest in these uh, speakers. and. Uh, and that's not definitely not the case. Uh, we have, uh, I have, uh, was lucky to invite a, a lot of uh, interesting people uh, on the forefront of um, uh, solar and wind energy. We had uh, Mark Jacobson from Stanford University. We had, um, we had, uh, um, uh, Joseph, uh, 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 Jacob LaBelle, uh, just lately, uh, a young man who is one of the 21 plaintiffs against uh, the United States government uh, because uh, the policies that uh, several administrations supported 
is kind of ruining their constitutional right to have a safe and, and happy life. Um, and uh, uh, we had Jeffrey Sachs from the Earth Institute and actually uh, announcing also uh, the next speaker will be uh, Kim Stanley Robinson, a bestseller uh, science fiction author who wrote uh, several books that are about climate change and, and very realistic. And his uh, last uh, uh, novel is The Ministry of uh, For the Future, which I recommend everybody to read. And it starts really with a, a devastating description of a heat wave in India that kills 10 million people in one instance. Mm -hmm. And that's actually something that we are facing if we are not getting our acts together and work in every level uh, full throttle against this uh, terrible threat. Okay, I might uh, end here. I don't want to overextend. Yeah. Tom, just so that you know, we're putting your lecture series on our calendar also. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Sister mm -hmm. uh, Rosine. I also should mention quickly the environmental documentary series which used to be in person and attracted local people once in a while too. And students, of course, with extra credit uh, are coming and writing essays about it. Uh, we went uh, virtual with COVID and I look forward. So the next season should be in person, uh, but there are always links. Uh, is there actually a chat that I can post links uh, for everybody? I don't see a chat window. Uh, then I could share the links to the speaker series, mm -hmm. which probably I don't need if Sister Rosine, you are sharing, but the mm -hmm. documentary series I could share. Yeah. Uh, but maybe um, you can just share that also. John, do we have a chat yeah. here? I think we do, but uh, Dr. Wasmer, if you wish to send that information to save, we will, we will disseminate it through our Facebook. Okay. Okay, then we do it that way. Yes. So, so the program for next season is not ready yet. I usually always look what's going on on the uh, the festivals. What what are the newcomers? But I also bring up some uh, oldies, but goldies uh, that are very important in the different fields of of sustainability. Well, thank you so very, very much, Dr. Bosmer. And um, uh, it's very clear that you're very passionate about um, saving our earth and um, definitely uh, not only in your teaching, but in, but in everything that you do, the way that you're made, able to make the connections. Uh, fabulous. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, sister, uh, are you a sister? I assume. Yes, yeah. Yes, I am. Sister yes, Sharon. Sister Sharon. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Uh, and also to the all of SAFE for this honor. Great. Thank you. Um, it's my happy pleasure to announce our Eco Faith Community Award, uh, which goes to an incredibly deserving group the St. Timothy Episcopal Church uh, <clears throat> a Clothesline Outreach Project. Um, and I'll, I'll have to admit, as I read about everything that you're doing, um, it, a, a couple things amaze me. Number one, that you're able to take something as simple as a clothing collection and to elevate it to the level that you've elevated it is simply astounding. Um, I love the fact that you don't have a store for people to come and get clothing, but a boutique. Um, and I, I think that really says a lot. Um, the uh, way that you not only provide for the needs of the poor, but really make the connections and, and treat people with such wonderful human dignity is so very fabulous. And so I'd love for you to share a little bit about what you do in your project. Hey, thank you very much for bestowing this honor on St. Timothy's Clothesline. Clothesline began in April of 2009 started by the outreach committee in the outdoor courtyard that summer and moved indoors to the Ray Barber room that fall. Hope Jarvis took it upon as her ministry and organized and ran Clothesline till the beginning of 2019, when she said her work was done and it was time to step away. 
The women volunteering in Clothesline found Hope's shoes hard to fill and decided to run Clothesline with a group of coordinators. They are here tonight and will speak later about their areas of responsibility. Clothesline is open to everyone every Friday from 9.30 to 11 and by special appointments. There are no income or residency requirements. Sorting of the donation takes place on most other weekdays. The purpose of the Clothesline, a ministry of St. Timothy's Episcopal Church in Perrysburg, is to provide a warm and welcoming environment where free clothing, resources, and socialization are offered. We are environmentally sound. We try not to throw anything away. We donate clothing we can't use to our earth and the clothing goes to third world countries, to Salvation Army, our out of season winter coats to the fringe in Bowling Green for distribution at Project Connects, extra t-shirts to Sunshine Communities to make projects to sell, black and blue shirts and pants and black and brown shoes to Toledo Public School Jones Academy and clothing to migrant workers and refugees and many other worthwhile causes that come to our attention. Our mission has changed somewhat over the years to add an offshoot mission, the Mitten Ministry, using donated wool sweaters, et cetera, to felt and sew mittens to donate to people in need. This past winter distributed to the residents of the cocoon in Bowling Green, as well as homeless people in Toledo. Before COVID changed things, one of our volunteer coordinators, Nan Myers, organized and ran a mobile clothesline for needy and homeless people in Toledo. We purchased toiletries and distribute them to people brought to us by social workers for a one-time donation as they get back on their feet after rehab, prison, fires, and other calamities. Our 20-something volunteers are always ready to help wherever and whenever needed. Our six coordinators will briefly tell you about their jobs and I'll start mine. I'm Susan Winters and I handle publicity, thank you notes, fundraising, including supply month once a year for church members to bring supplies they agree to bring to run clothesline for the year. I also handle the finances and lately buy a lot of toiletries from the Dollar Tree to hand out. Here are our other coordinators. Hi, my name is Bonnie Ferguson and I am the coordinator for the um, refugees and the migrant um, workers when they come to our area. Um, we have been able to help some of the Afghan refugees that uh, have come to Toledo. I am assuming we'll probably help some Ukrainian ones when they get here too. It was really heartwarming a few months ago when one of the Afghan um, ladies that came for clothing picked out a pair of sandals that she wore the next day when she was married. And when we heard that story, it was very heartwarming. Um, we also helped the migrant farmers uh, the migrants, when they come into the area, sometimes it's just uh, a single man that needs long sleeve shirts and jeans. Sometimes their whole family comes and we help the whole family with clothing if they're needed. So that's my job. Hi, I'm Kay Bunk, and I'm the coordinator for communication and organization. And that involves keeping the communication lines open between all of the volunteers, the church, and the shoppers. Um, also, facilitate the monthly clothesline staff meetings and arrange short teachings to aid in staff development and growth. I assist with methods of conflict management, and I'm aware of the procedure manual and everything in it in case anyone needs to know. I can spout that off pretty fast. So I also am the coordinator for our prayer requests. We actually have a prayer station in our clothesline area for shoppers to leave um, prayer requests. They get turned into the church then and are prayed for on a regular basis. Also, sometimes hands-on prayer right then at the moment, depending on what the need is. Hi, I'm Nan Myers. I'm in charge of the volunteers. Uh, we sort clothes twice a week on Tuesday and Thursday mornings, making sure we have sorters. And also um, in charge of making sure we have enough uh, volunteers on Friday mornings when we're open. And I also 
will train volunteers who want to learn how to sort. My name is Judy Snyder and I'm the coordinator for outreach. Um, my purpose is to make sure there are resource materials for our shoppers when they come in and also the resource materials are different from our agencies, which we have six different um, agencies that we work with to make, and I make appointments for them to bring in people who are trying to get back on their feet again. And that's where the toiletries go. And then I'm just always trying to be aware of where there is a need in the community and to be able to get those resources out efficiently. Diane, is Diane still on? And Diane Kleberger is one of our coordinators too. Diane, are you still on? I am. Um, hey, Diane. I, I, I actually just take care of the children's room which uh, we have everything from newborn up to size 10, 12s. Um, we keep year round clothing, not just the uh, clothing for the, um, the, the, um, or the, the time of the year, we keep it year round. Um, we do a lot of uh, work for the mom's house. A lot of the moms come and uh, are able to get clothing for their children. And also, Diane, you do the event planning. Um, which actually, you know, pre-COVID, we did a lot of events throughout the year. Um, we make sure that everybody has a wonderful social uh, plan that they they are able to to get to know each other as the as the uh, shoppers come. Um, we haven't done too much of that lately, but we try to at least celebrate some of the uh, the the holidays that everybody kind of celebrates that they may not do at home. We want to thank you again for this honor and please come and see us in action. Well, you are a force of nature, that is for sure. Your organization is just absolutely fabulous. Um, blessings to you. May you have many, many more wonderful years of ministry. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd now like to ask Sister Rosine to announce our Community Building Award. Is Alicia here? I don't see her in a thing. It seems not. Mm. Okay. Well, anyway, I can tell you about Alicia. Um, she was at. Uh, she was in a magazine. She was in National Wildlife uh, magazine, and I looked and I saw that she's in Toledo, Ohio, and I go, "Oh my gosh, she's right here!" And we don't know anything about her. So that was last year, or maybe the year before. And then we did some searching and everything else and felt that Alicia should get the Community Building Award. Uh, she is the co-founder and director of the Junction Coalition. It's a community organization that started as an opportunity to help the community help themselves through partnering with others to address social, economic, and environmental issues. And uh, her uh, activity went into high gear during 2014, when we had the algal bloom outbreak. The Junction Coalition was then pushed into environmental action. Families were in need of support, information, and education, not just for a few days of the, of the, of the crisis, but a continuum of support and interaction for safe, clean, and affordable drinking water. Prior to this role, she served as the executive director of the Youth Commission and the manager of youth and manager of recreation for the city of Toledo. She's also served in many, many different areas over the 15 years working in Toledo, YMCA, the TMACOG, and the Grant Found uh, friend, in Grant Fundamentals, working with inner city youth, teaching the skills and healing the community trauma through improving listening and critical thinking skills. She started her professional career in Detroit as a kindergarten teacher, later serving as a school principal and now being involved in the Junction Coalition. 
she is pursuing her doctoral studies right now at the University of Toledo, focusing on the educational development of youth of color with low socioeconomic, socioeconomic and disenfranchised communities. She had a Bachelor of Arts in Education and Counseling, and then a Master of Arts in Criminal Justice and Juvenile Law. So she's very well situated for doing all that she is doing. She has been awarded a number of things, a 2022 Community Change Agent Award by a sorority, um, the 2021 Ohio Women of Conservation Award by the National Wildlife Federation and the Environmental Justice and Equity Expert Award in 2020. She believes that justice work is not limited to the environment, but touches on issues of social and economic justice with the goal of promoting peace, public health, and a better quality of life for all citizens. I'd like to congratulate Alicia for all that she does um, to bring the, um, the central city and the junction area uh, into um, a viable, life-changing endeavor. Great. Well, thank you, Sister Rosine. Um, and congratulations to Alicia. Well, this would be where we would have a great party. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't do it this year, uh, but we hope that you do celebrate all of the goodness that you do and all of the goodness. Um, we are the unsung, if you will, of the Toledo area, the larger Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. And um, we do thank you for all the good that, you, that, that happens here. Um, and even as you recommit yourself um, to doing what you're doing, uh, we hope you, we, you also do celebrate it. We hope that next year we can have a grand party to get all of our award winners together um, and to share all of the connections and interconnections um, that are so important to our area. So hopefully next year. Uh, we also do um, invite um, all of you to take part in our free public lecture series. Our first lecture is going to be on September 13th, um, <clears throat> uh, given by Thomas Wortman, the Ohio Director of the Mutual UFO Network. Um, and he will be speaking on the current government research into UFOs. Um, military encounters uh, indicate potential effects on the crew. Uh, so it should be quite, quite interesting. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we have uh, five, a series of five lectures through the year. We also do invite you to join SAVE. Uh, further information can be found on our website, sciencealliancesave.org. And um, uh, we also uh, invite you, uh, if you would like to support us, to um, uh, take part in uh, purchasing of our fund, uh, our little fundraiser, which is local honey uh, and maple syrup that we sell at the All Good Things story, store in Sylvania, Ohio. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we like to once again, congratulate all of the award winners. Uh, we, you haven't heard the last of us. We will be contacting you shortly. We do have a certificate, a small gift to give you and um, a, a booklet with all of the award winners as a little memento for the um, night tonight. Um, so uh, one last thank you, and that is to all of the SAVE board members who have worked so hard to put this uh, event together tonight. Thank you all. Blessings to you on all the good that you do. Uh, we hope to see you in the future. Good night.